Hey folks, Kawakji here. This is the first in a series of videos I've wanted to do ever since Spicy did his Goon Station tutorial. Thanks to people like him, Hippie, Tex, and Cryocotic, I've been seeing a lot more people on Goon, which is nice. Goon's kind of forgotten compared to the bigger branches of code. And that's a shame, because it's definitely my favorite server to play on. There's just something about it. The bees. The clowns. Ass day. Anyhow, there's been an appreciable influx of people to goon. But a lot of them don't seem to know what they're doing. I see a lot of people rolling doctor and accidentally letting their patients bleed out on the table because they don't know how to keep them stable. Sometimes they'll panic when there are too many patients. Some of them don't even know there's a cloner. Stuff like that. So I wanted to go beyond Spicy's basic tutorial to show off some tips and tricks about various jobs. A little bit of meta stuff here and there, but not so much as to ruin the exploration factor. Enough to get you going, but not necessarily spoil everything for you. Goon's all about the secrets, that's one of its big strengths. And I encourage any new player to just blow a whole round or two on doing explory shit. Root around in maintenance. Grab a mini putt pod and run around space, check out the asteroid field, explore some derelicts, die horribly to drones where no one can find you. Sky's the limit. You never know what mysterious things you might find out there. Now, I picked Medic for my first tutorial video because it's probably one of the most useful jobs to learn first. And. I gotta say it's my favorite. I'm a softie. I love helping people. But, in any case, I say this because Goon isn't like some other servers. It isn't like, say, Colonial Marines, where your average foot slogger looks at a syringe of tricord and is like, Unga dunga, I can't read. Only letters I need are U, S, and A. The shit you learn as a medic is applicable in whatever job you do. This comes in very handy if, say, you've been thrown out an airlock and slam into the mining station at terminal velocity and have about 15 seconds to stabilize yourself before you die of freeze-drying and shock. Or, say, if you're a janitor and you're cleaning shit up by your office near disposals when suddenly dunk 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 a body just crashes onto the belts next to you and they only have a sliver of life left in them medicine's a good tool to have in your kit that way the bread and butter of doctoring comes down to four different chems with these four under your belt you'll be able to handle about eighty percent of the boo-boos you come across easy you've got styptic sylvadine Charcoal, and epinephrine. Styptic is for tissue damage. If you're shot, stabbed, or otherwise mangled, this will stop bleeding and heal brute damage. Sylvadine, on the other hand, is for burns. You see these when a bomb goes off near someone, or an engineer sets the engine on fire, or when you walk into a cloud of flaming plasma and you breathe it in because you forgot to set your internals. These two are big because you can look at someone with alt-click and just see that they're beat up or burned without any fancy gear. The other two are more subtle. Charcoal's the antitoxin of a station. Someone eats something they shouldn't have, gets injected with cyanide, screwed around naked by the radioisotope generator. They get poison damage. Finally, epinephrine is for stabilizing people. A lot of people don't bother with it, but as a medical doctor, it's a chemical you should really respect. There's a reason there's an auto-injector full of it in every standard medikit. Epinephrine doesn't heal anything on its own, but it does buy you time. If someone's really beat to shit, epinephrine will make them slip away more slowly so that you have more time to treat them. That's it for basic doctoring. Brute, burn, toxin, and technically, I guess, suffocation. One thing to keep in mind is that the first two are touch chems, and the latter two are ingest chems. Goon chemicals can have different effects depending on how they interact with your body. 
it's good to keep this in mind because sometimes a chemical that'll help you if it's put on skin will actually poison you if it's ingested. Many a new medic has accidentally poisoned someone trying to inject them with styptic, thinking they were saving them. But the long and short of it for the big four is that if you're handling brood or burn, you either want to be using a patch, or if you're desperate, just splashing the damn beaker on them. Epinephrine and charcoal, however, need to be injected somehow. That's the lion's share of what you need to know about being a medical doctor on Goon. If you don't want anything else spoiled, check out now. Because from here on out, it's more advanced stuff. And metagamey stuff. Tips and tricks. Fair warning. Okay. Now on to the more advanced stuff. There's a lot more to doctoring, but the important thing to remember is that pretty much every basic healing chem has a bigger, badder alternative that's much better at its job, but which comes at a price. These are what separate you from being a glorified assistant with a medikit. For burn and brute damage, the bigger, badder alternative is synth flesh. There's no real drawback to synth flesh, it's just styptic and sylvadine, but better. I suppose the real problem is that it takes a lot of time to make, and chemistry doesn't actually have all the ingredients they need to make it on its own. For poisons, the alternative is calomel, or as they're trying to implement right now, space ipecac. These work differently from charcoal, and that's why they're so dangerous. Unlike charcoal, which directly attacks toxin damage, calomel's a purgative. That means it works by making you vomit your guts out until all the vile shit you've ingested is gone. Calomel's for when the poison in a patient's system is more dangerous than the toxin damage you're going to deal by hitting them with the purgative. Like really lethal toxins like sulfonyl or pancuronium. Or really debilitating ones like neurotoxin. You should probably get some experience under your belt before you use these, because they do deal damage and screw up movement. You don't want the cure to be worse than the disease. Salbutamol, which comes in these lovely blue containers, is kind of a complement to and a limited substitute for CPR, which is done by using the help intent on someone who stopped breathing after you've removed any headgear in the way. It helps to make up for suffocation damage, and it mainly comes in useful when you're treating a lot of stuff at once, and you just don't have time to perform CPR. This'll kind of fill in for CPR, letting you do more important things like stopping bleeding or removing the 2x4 stuck in someone's chest. Lastly, epinephrine's big brother is atropine. Epinephrine's something you should be hitting every case with where the problem can't be fixed instantly. Atropine, on the other hand, is something you should only use when the patient is so fucked up and so close to the brink of death that you seriously doubt in your own ability to save them in time. It's a much stronger stabilization chemical. In real life, it's used to treat people who've been hit with, say, nerve agents. But you don't want to use it willy-nilly because it's hard to get a hold of and medbay doesn't really start with enough to go around. Or at least, not enough to go through it like candy, like with epinephrine. On top of that, atropine screws up people's movement, causing them to stumble around uncontrollably for a long time, with even a small dose. This isn't just inconvenient, it can be dangerous. Because sometimes you want the patient to be able to walk away under their own power. Like, say, when there are syndicates nearby. You don't want the captain's last words to be cursing your name because they can't walk straight and get hit by an RPG. The next two big chems you have to worry about are mannitol and mutadone, but they're pretty simple. Mannitol's for brain damage, which is pretty common, all things told. People get beat over the heads with Bibles, shot out of mass drivers, all sorts of stuff that scrambles the noggin. Mutadone's for mutations. These show up for a lot of reasons, I don't want to bore you, but the most common reason is that they've been cloned not quite right. We like to play like we're God, but really the cloners are cross between a 3D printer and a slow cooker, so there are some hiccups. People might come out deaf, or short-sighted. Mutadone clears that up. The rest of the chemicals see much less use, but I'll run through them really quickly. 
Oculine is for eye damage. You'll see this in people who've tried to weld without protection. Or clowns who've repeatedly stabbed themselves in the eye while trying to get a banana open. Diphenhydramine is an antihistamine. It's used to treat bee stings, or when some cheeky chemist has made itching powder. Antihol used to be its own chem, but now charcoal produces it on contact with ethanol. So if someone's gone cruising for a boozin' at the bar and is now in danger of passing out and drowning on their own vomit, hit them with that. Smelling salts are really niche, but they essentially make your stamina recovery go crazy. Like a shitty combat drug. Salicylic acid and morphine are painkillers. They'll make it easier for people to move when injured. Helpful, but use in moderation. Morphine's a lot better at the job, but at the end of the day it is morphine and can rapidly knock you out if you use too much. Filgrastin and saline regrow blood, but they're kind of used for different things. Filgrastin just regrows blood, and it's good at it. So it's mostly for people who've been stabilized, but lost a lot of the red stuff in the process. Saline glucose, though, ringers, isn't quite as good at restoring blood, but it helps a little with brute and burn, and acts as a temporary filler for blood, and also helps fix shock, which happens when someone gets really badly beaten up and makes it hard for them to function. Ringers are good for surgery. You can take one of the bags around medbay, hook it up to a blood bag holder, and then click drag to a patient to keep them hooked up while you work on them. This lowers the chance that you'll accidentally kill someone while chopping off their legs to replace them with treads, or scooping out their eyes with medbay's glorified melon baller to give them horrific laser versions. Spacicillin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic. It helps with a lot of diseases. You generally want to hit any disease you encounter with it first, because the majority of the time, it'll knock it down. If it doesn't, then it's time to panic, quarantine medbay, and call the shuttle. Bandages and thread will stop bleeding, but more importantly, they seal up surgery stuff. If you need to, say, replace someone's malfunctioning ticker with a robotic one, you probably want to stitch them back up again as fun as walking around with a hideous open rib cage must be. Potassium iodide is for radiation poisoning. Miners will usually come in with this because they've decided to get intimate with a serenkite deposit without proper protection. Proconvertin and heparin are opposites, with proconvertin being a coagulant and heparin being a blood thinner. But their dangers so outweigh their usefulness that they never ever get used. Heparin's especially dangerous because, like in real life, the difference between blood thinner and rat poison is just a matter of dosage. Insulin's really nice, when you need it. Basically, sugar can send you into a diabetic coma, and a few very enterprising traders know this. Insulin fixes that. Menthol, which you find in a lot of the medical cabinets, is essentially sylvadine light. It's useful if you've got nothing else. There are a few others I've left out, because they're extra fun, but that's pretty much all the advanced ones. Now, there are just a few more things you've got to know before you get your Goon Station medical license. One's cloning, which is pretty simple. Drag a person or a corpse into the scanner, scan them in on the computer, and then clone them unless they're a Puritan, in which case, bad things will happen. It's important to get dead folks scanned ASAP, because if they're too rotten, the cloner can't read them without a special expansion card. How you get one of these is one of those things you can find out through exploration. Here's a hint. Someone is selling them. Surgery is the last important thing you have to learn. It's where most people screw up and accidentally kill someone. This is because a lot of the surgical tools have secondary functions, or change what type of surgical action they do when you change your intent with them. People also tend to bleed out a lot when you're working on them, which means you need to be quick, something that comes only with experience and actually knowing what you're doing. You can Monty Python it and 
try to learn as you go. But some people might be a bit miffed when you say, put a left leg on their right leg socket and they stumble around like a retard for the rest of the round. In surgery, little things matter. This is because surgery is absurdly powerful. You can give people robotic arms that can break out of cuffs, eyes that shoot laser beams, treads which will make you immune to slipping and make you move super fast. This is balanced by the fact that it's difficult to do on yourself. I say difficult because it is possible, it's just not pleasant or easy. I'll let you figure out how on your own. For normal stuff, though, I'll give you the rundown. The most common surgery you're going to be doing is simply tacking on limbs. The frontier is dangerous, and space OSHA just doesn't make the rounds out here. That means, very frequently, the first thing you're going to see at the beginning of your shift as you're settling in with your morning coffee is someone dragging their own severed leg along with them like some shell-shocked straggler from the Battle of the Somme. This is a simple fix. Make sure you're on help intent, take your original replacement limb, target the corresponding limb, and use it on the patient. This kinda shoves it on awkwardly where it'll stick shakily for a little while until it falls back off. To avoid that part, you follow this up with a staple gun. And no, you can't use any old red swing line. I've tried. They'll probably start bleeding, so either stitch him up or slap a styptic patch on him and call it a day. Getting a limb off is even simpler. Like with most medical procedures, they have to be down on a surgical table first. Take your scalpel in one hand and a saw in the other. The order goes scalpel, saw, scalpel. If the limb falls off, you did it right. Now you can do the basics of limb replacement. The other big surgery is eye replacement, not because people lose a lot of them necessarily, but rather because the synthetic replacement eyes can do a lot of cool stuff, stuff that you'd otherwise need special equipment for. Prodoc eyes, for example, let you see people's medical rundown, both in detail and at a glance. Messen eyes let you see through walls. There are many more, but I'll let you figure those out for yourself. Eye surgery is a bit more complex because the eye you take out is dependent on which hand you've got your tool in. So, for instance, if you wanted to remove a guy's left eye, you'd put your ice cream scoop in your left hand first. Again, make sure you're on help intent. Then target the head. Use the spoon, and then drop it and pick up the scalpel with the same hand. Use that, then back to the spoon. All with the left hand only. Putting an eye in is a lot simpler. Just put the eye in the right hand for the eye you want to target, squish it in, and stick them up. Bob's your uncle. That's it for basic surgeries. Any more and you'd kind of be stealing the roboticist's thunder. I will say, however, that you can do a lot more than just limbs and eyes with surgery. Experiment on some monkeys. See what you can do. Just uh, be careful because they are vicious little things. <coughs> There's even a way to surgically implant things in people which can be used for a variety of medicinal purposes. A final thought. The in-game manual and the wiki for Goon are definitely your friends here. Goon may not have too big of a community, but it's a very active and helpful one. If those don't work, there's always men or help. They're always glad to answer questions, so don't be afraid to ask. Well, that is about it for medicine on Goon Station. Go out there, make me proud, slip in all the blood and get brain damage from slamming into the virology doors. If this has been a baffling experience, bereft of context, like listening to a foreign language or people discussing tax law, I'd recommend dropping in on Spicy's basic tutorial. It's a great breakdown on the basics of the game. If you want to take a look at some of the experiences of someone learning Goon as they go, or just want to learn how every Cargonian can be a king, so long as you pay attention to Minor and don't wander off into a lava monster's mouth, I'd recommend Texas videos. Not quite sure on which job I'll do the next video on, but I'm open to suggestions. I'm thinking I might set it aside for a little addendum on how to be a traitor medic. 
Other than that, that's all, folks. This is Kawakshi, hoping I will see you all again.